So absinthe is a botanical spirit. It's made in a very similar way to gin. You start with a neutral grain spirit and then you distill it with different botanicals. With gin, you need juniper, but if you're making an absinthe, you need grand wormwood, green anise, and fennel seed. So Devil's Botany is the UK's first absinthe distillery. We have a background in bartending and we were always drawn to absinthe for its ability to act as a flavour enhancer in cocktails, but also it was one of the most mysterious spirits that could be found on every back bar but wasn't really being utilised. So absinthe is definitely loud and full of flavour. It's made to be diluted. So it's often bottled at a higher ABV, and as you add the water to a glass of absinthe, it opens up the flavors and the aromas and also releases the oils from the botanicals. So to make absinthe, we take a British wheat spirit, very high proof. We put that into our copper pot still, infuse that with botanicals, so ground worm with green anise fennel seed and a whole host of other botanicals. Distill that through, and at the end of that, you become a clear spirit like our Devil's Botany London Absinthe. And then to make a green coloured absinthe, we take our spirit, we soak that into more herbs and botanicals for a period of 12 24 hours. That extracts all of the chlorophyll and turns our absinthe green. So many people think that the green style of absinthe is the traditional style, but both the clear and green absinthe were being made and actually imported here in the UK. We found like old advertisements for absinthe, both clear and green, imported here dating back to like 1830s. Uh, the clear style of absinthe are definitely a little bit less bitter because the second maceration process that Reese mentioned will also impart an extra level of herbaceousness and bitter flavors, but both of them work really nicely together. It will impart a more bitter taste, a more raw, a more herbal flavour rather than it just being distilled. Because when you distill the absinthe, a lot of the bitter components are left behind. So you, for a green absinthe, you want a bit more bitterness and you want to add some sugar to that to help enjoy the spirit. There are many myths and misconceptions that surround absinthe. It remains one of the most widely misunderstood spirits out there. That's definitely down to the fact that wormwood contains an ingredient, a compound called thujone, which for a long time they thought was hallucinogenic, but modern science caught up and found out that actually it's not hallucinogenic at all. Yeah, so absinthe was definitely a favored drink of the Belle Epoque in France. But long before that, uh, absinthe was being made here in London and it was sold under the pretense of magic and medicine, really. So people would go to their local apothecary and they would get an elixir, an early example of absinthe, and it was prescribed to them to raise one's spirits, which is great because I think a good drink can always raise our spirits. That eventually translated into an aperitif, so someone found the absinthe recipe and realized that this works recreationally, and it ended up becoming one of the most widely consumed spirits in France and around the world up until the turn of the 20th century. Around the turn of the 20th century it started getting a bad reputation and it was eventually banned. And then the UK never got around to making it legal and that meant that during the 1920s and 1930s when London was seeing its heyday of classic cocktail culture, many of the bartenders here will still use absinthe in their recipes. So you have the Savoy cocktail book including it in over 100 recipes which is pretty amazing and I think now that's sort of forgotten. Mm -hmm.